All right, motherfuckers, let's talk about NXT. I was able to watch a little bit of NXT uh, by skipping around, and um, I liked what I saw. I mean, it was um, it was all right. NXT uh, was was good compared to AEW, and I wouldn't say it was as good as last week because last week they had some really good wrestlers that were showcased, but nonetheless, it was pretty good. There were some some actual storyline moments. Now, some of these moments involved people that I despise, but I got to give them credit, you know? Like, how are you going to get the hater to like you? You're going to change it up, motherfuckers. So there you go. First off, we had Rhea Ripley versus Bianca Belair. Now, Rhea Ripley, I, I, get, I get it. I get her appeal, you know? She's, she's, she's a bad broad, man. She looks like she can kick ass, and she's, like, young, too, so she's only going to look more and more intimidating as, a, you know, as a, them, them crow's feet show up on her eyes, motherfuckers. She's not that hot, so we can look forward to that. Versus Bianca Belair, who I think is an absolute star. So I understand Rhea Ripley is the one that's being pushed right now, but I like Bianca Belair. You know, I feel like she hasn't gotten a fair shake. This girl, in my opinion, should already be NXT champion. But it's neither here nor there. There was interference both from Io Shirai and Candice LeRae. Now, I think they have some sort of uh, thing going on here. I know that Last week, Io Shirai came out and cut a shitty, you know, Japanese person speaking English promo about how it should be her, you know, like sounding like, sounding like Dolph Ziggler being this bitch, it should have been me. That's like, by the way, quick, quick tangent, that's Dolph Ziggler's entire fucking career, his entire fucking career is it should have been me. This guy fucking sucks, he thinks he's like a main eventer, and he keeps telling people, oh, like... Like, pull this off. I'm the show off. What the fuck? Yes, he's like a three-move retard. Who, and the moves that he does are stupid. The zigzag, it's like a Russian leg sweep. It, it doesn't look like it hurts. Like, it doesn't look like the guy would fall if someone did that. But neither here nor there. And then he does a super kick in, a, in, like, the worst way possible. The only two people that should be doing the super kick are, of course, the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels motherfuckers, and, and the Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm. They do it with respect, and they do it always as a finisher. Like, nobody kicks out of the sweet chin music, unless it's like a WrestleMania match. Nobody kicks out of the last call, unless it's also a big match. So, nonetheless, uh, that's what I think about Dolph Ziggler. Bianca Belair, she should have won. It is what it is. These four broads that were involved in this thing were all also involved uh, in the segment one way or another last week. When Io Shirai said, it's not Bianca Belair, it's not Candice, and then Rhea Ruby came out and said, it's going to be me. Like, Don't say it's not me. So the four of them are going to have some sort of match. I don't know if they announce this or not, but I'm sure that they're going to have some, uh, what's it called? Some fatal four-way type match to determine the number one contender for Shayna Baszler. Now, because wrestling is wrestling, we know that Rhea Ripley is obviously going to win. Um, Candice LeRae, I don't think she's there yet in terms of like being like, honestly being over. Let's call it what it is. Being over and also it would just look stupid her wrestling uh, Shayna Baszler. They're, they're two opposing characters, you know? Like, Shayna Baszler would just wipe the floor with his broad, but Rhea Ripley looks like she could put up a fight. And clearly that's where they're going. It's sure as shit not going to be Io Shirai or Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair just jobbed again, you know? Rhea Ripley hit the riptide, she jobbed. And Io Shirai is a heel, like a bona fide heel. So it's not going to be heel versus heel. At best, it's going to be heel versus Rhea Ripley, who is like a tweener type. Anyways... They had a, a little moment with Pete Dunne being interviewed. And uh, he made no excuses, which is cool, because that's what makes Pete Dunne good. He's not that guy that's going to be like, oh, he low blowed me. No, he took it like a man. And then uh, he talks about Killian Dane, says he doesn't care about Killian Dane. No one cares about Killian Dane, motherfuckers. So uh, that's how that's going to be. And yeah. That's what happened with that. It was stupid. Killian Dane is now like doing like a, he's like, angry. Because uh, Pete Dunne injured his fingers. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's not something you start a storyline over. And whatever. Then we had Matt Riddle versus Cameron Grimes. Now, Cameron Grimes is a guy that's been destroying people left and right. But he has yet to shake off the stigma, the odor, motherfuckers. The stink, you know what I'm saying? Of uh, the reek of um, being what he is. And that's... The guy who came in second place in the in the jobber tournament. You know what I mean? Where the fuck is the guy that won? ACH or whatever, Jordan Smiles or Jordan Miles. 
who the fuck is that guy? You know, like, why are we seeing, like, everybody else but him? And Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis, the guy, one guy that stood out. And ACH, the one guy who won. But instead, we see people like Cameron Grimes, who I'm not going to complain. Cameron Grimes is all right, but come on, you know? So anyways, um, yeah, like, at one point, Riddle does a jackhammer. The crowd goes, Riddle, like, kind of like, as if he were Goldberg. Haha, <laughs> get it? That's just... Like a smarky thing, you know, that's something that would only happen on NXT or perhaps in AEW. Uh, maybe on Raw if it's like a, you know, I feel like in Chicago or some like, you know, bullshit like Philadelphia or some like really like annoying wrestling town, maybe even New York. But that would not happen in NWA, motherfuckers, which is like, uh, I only watched one, one of the episodes that they've made, but I loved it. Uh, so that's what I got to say about that. It wouldn't happen there. There, they're not like nerds. So this is like a really nerdy chant, but it is what it is. Uh... Riddle hits the, uh, the ripcord knee and the bro to sleep, uh, followed by a German suplex, which, I, which in WWE 2K20, which is the first WWE game I haven't bought since SmackDown, but I did see the moves online. That's one move, motherfuckers. The, the go to sleep and the suplex, German suplex, are called the bro to sleep in the game, which I dig. That's cool. The go to sleep. But, but what's weird is that the go to sleep was like a finisher that put away people like Kane. Like, just think about what that means, right? When CM Punk... A loser, a guy who's never won a fight in his life, probably. When that guy does it, it puts away Kane, right? It puts away Kane when CM Punk barely lifts him up and doesn't go to sleep. But when Matt Riddle does the bro to sleep, right? Matt Riddle, an actual UFC fighter who had a pretty good record, everything considered. He got a few no contests because of, like, his pot smoking. But a very good fighter, you know, to his respect... Does a and a guy who clearly knows how to fight and can strike does the bro to sleep and then hits a German suplex, right? And fucking Cameron Grimes kicks out. Now, either we're to, be, we're to believe that Cameron Grimes is tougher than Kane, which is preposterous, or we're to believe that CM Punk is stronger, better, and a better striker than Matt Riddle. And he's none of those things. He's, motherfuckers, he's not even a better wrestler. You know what I'm saying? I really hope CM Punk doesn't come back. And if he does, I hope he starts to draw some fucking Drew Gulak or something like that. Stand, forgive me for that. Once again, my other video was finished, uh, whatever, finalizing itself, and it started playing. So uh, that's going to be uploaded pretty soon up in this piece. So where was I? Oh, yeah, CM Punk coming back. I hope he jobs to Lince Dorado or Drew Gulak if he comes back. But anyways, uh, back to the show at hand, fuck faces. So we left off with Matt Riddle hitting the bro to sleep in German suplex and Cameron Grimes kicking out, which he has no business kicking out of a move like that when done by Matt Riddle. But here we are, you know, uh, Matt, Gri uh, Matt Grimes, <laughs> Rick Grimes, <laughs> Cameron Grimes does a bunch of bullshit and... Uh, What's it called? A bunch of more shit happens. It, 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 like, you know, it was a good match. I didn't like the fact that Cameron Grimes, who's a jobber, did so well. But, uh, yeah, it ends with, uh, what's his face? Matt Riddle hitting the final flash, which is just a knee. And the bro Derek, which is my favorite wrestling move name in a while. And Riddle wins. So that's pretty cool. You know, that was fun. And there we go. Match was all right. I can't say that, uh, you know, it was great, but I'll be honest. You know, even though Goldberg is obviously a legend, Matt Riddle's, like, Riddle, like, moment was good because I know that there's some bullshit that's going on between him and Goldberg, and, like, he said something about Goldberg, and Goldberg is like, I ain't your buddy, pal. I ain't your pal, guy. So that's, that's happening, and uh, who gives a rat's ass about that? Then we had uh, Brizango and Isaiah Scott. Uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott versus the Forgotten Sons. Now, Brizango, you know, they are what they are. But well, let's be real, man. They're jobbers. They've been demoted to NXT. Anyone that comes back to NXT has been demoted. I don't care if they come back for the title. I don't care if they win every belt. You came back. You, were, you left to pursue greener pastures and... You didn't get the fucking grades, motherfuckers. So you're back to the jobber leagues. You're back to not ever being on WrestleMania, not ever being on a, on a real pay-per-view and all that. You're back, let's be honest, you're back to wrestling in a gymnasium in front of a few hundred people at best. So with that in mind, and the fact that Isaiah Scott is also a jobber who did not win 
the jobber tournament. He's not even the best jobber. They should be losing to the Forgotten Sons who deserve a push. If they're not going to get a push, why are they even there? You know? Take Jackson Riker away from these two jobbers. Let this guy shine. You know? It is what it is. Uh, the match was all right. I mean, what do you expect? And uh, Isaiah Scott kicked Steve Cutler and pinned him. Now, let's be honest. Steve Cutler, I don't even think this guy's a Wikipedia page. He's been in developmental for like a like a fucking decade. You know, I the fact this guy has a job is ridiculous. You know, it's just foolish. He's taking the spot out of someone that actually could be good. Now, it appears the next thing we had was Angel Garza versus Jack Gallagher. Now, it appears that the Cruiserweight title has now been uh, promoted, if you will, to NXT, right? At least these motherfuckers get to be on TV a little bit because we had two other NXT uh, jobbers who are also 205 Live jobbers, Angel Garza and Jack Gallagher. So, uh, what's it called? Gallagher, uh, Garza hits the, the springboard moonsault and wins. And he wants a title opportunity. Uh, Leo Rush was there on commentary, but who gives a shit? This guy, either he talks or he wrestles, man. Make up your minds, you know? There's, he's not established enough to be doing commentary, being like, oh, I wonder who my next challenger is. This isn't even... Two, 205 Live is, like, built around that, you know? So if we're going to see Cruiserweight title changes in NXT, then does that mean that 205 Live is on its way out, motherfuckers? I fucking hope so. Anyways, now we have... What I think, could be wrong here, but, hmm, that's weird. Something's weird in my mouth. My tongue feels weird, fuckers. It's probably from, uh, you know, licking the balls of wrestling as a whole, you know what I'm saying? All I do is watch wrestling. But anyways, we had Dakota Ty, Kai and Tegan Knox versus Marina Shafir and Jessamine Duke. Now, I believe that this is the debut of Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafir. Um, who gives a rat's ass? The Kodakai and Tegan Knox win. Now, again, who the fuck is Tegan Knox? Now, I don't understand why she's like presented as this like, oh, she came back from injury. I never even heard of this bitch. But she wins by hitting uh, the shiniest wizard, which is just a shiny wizard, a shiny wizard, to uh, uh, Justine Duke and pins her. Now, what's cool about this is that they, by winning this match, they became the number one contenders for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. Now, here's the problem with that. You have established female tag teams, right, on WWE, on main WWE. Like, yeah, Sasha Banks and Bayley. Why would they not want them again? Bayley could be a double champion, you know? They're like, the, the, basically, the discrepancy between, a, like, a female wrestler in the main roster and TNT is presented as being significant, right? So... Why would Asuka and Kairi Sane have any problem with these jobbers? Especially considering that Asuka is someone that was undefeated in NXT. She should come back and just put everyone away. No, no, no problem. She started having problems when she went to the main roster. And presumably because she was fighting superior opponents. Now, Marina Shafir and Jessamine Duke. Let's say they won. Their first match is a number one contendership match? Based on what? What have they done? They've done nothing. So, while it's cool to see that... Uh, an NXT team gets the challenge for the, for the women's titles, right? Which which I like because that's kind of the shtick of the women's tag team titles. There's only like one. So it would be only fair that tag teams from all over the place can get a shot. I don't know how this works with the brand split. I guess they're going to have this match in NXT. Uh, it's probably going to be a main event. So we'll see. Then we have the North American Championship. All right. This match was tight because all three of these guys can wrestle really well. Now, I know Roderick Strong is, uh, what's it called? A charismaless jobber. But he can wrestle, man. This guy is, like, pun intended, strong. This guy can pick up, like, big dudes. He, he out, of, out of Undisputed Era, he's the best one in the ring, in my opinion. Now, this match was tight. Uh, like I said, Dominic Dijakovic and Keith Lee have incredible chemistry. And just adding Roderick Strong doesn't hurt. Uh, he did an Olympic slam on Keith Lee. Now, it is what it is. But that's impressive, motherfuckers. That's just awesome. You know, I don't care if he can barely do it or do it or do it consistently. The fact is he did it and that's cool. Then, I mean, this match was like, it was a great match. You know, like I, I thought it was tight, but the finish is this. 
Dijakovic uh, gets hit by a sit-out powerbomb, but uh, Roderick motherfuckers breaks it up with a like a running knee, like almost like a sick kick type of thing. Like I guess he doesn't do a sick kick anymore, so he's doing a running knee like everybody else. And there you go. He wins. Roddy wins. So this match was tight. I mean, let's be real. Keith Lee, star. Dominic Dejakovic, give him a gimmick and a haircut, could be a star, or he could be something special. Roderick Strong, this is probably his ceiling. He might have like a run at the US title or something if they ever move up to the roster. Like if they, for example, decide to recreate uh, the same success that Undisputed Era had, he would be the one that wins the mid-card title while Adam Cole, God, I can't believe I'm saying it, while Adam Cole wins the world title. If that ever happens, I mean, that's going to be the end of wrestling as you know it. So there you go. Champa comes out afterwards to beat up on his Pereira with a crutch uh, after they're attacking everybody else for no reason. And then Johnny Gargano came to hang out with Champa. Now, enough of this nonsense, man. First they're friends, then they're not friends, then they're friends again, then they're not friends, and now they're friends? I don't know. Finn Balor comes out. Here's where it gets cool, fuckers. Finn Balor comes out to stand next to them. You know, kind of creating this three-man group that's going to go and destroy... Uh, in the short and long term, the Undisputed Era. But he hits a Pele kick on Gargano, motherfucks. And Undisputed Era took out Champa, and Balor beats the shit out of Gargano. And uh, apparently, Balor turns heel, fuckers. And then he does the little finger gun thing, where he, you know, the Bullet Club one, before he walks out of his own. In other words, he is not uh, Undisputed Era. That would be foolish because Undisputed Era is like already like full of people who are champions. Why would they want like any other members? They're, everyone's a champ. So presumably, kayfabe-wise, they're like the number one of the number one of the number one in NXT. So now, that's nice. I, I dig Finn Balor's heel turn. The only reason I like it is because this guy has had no character whatsoever. They're, they're reverting him back to the arrogant an annoying Finn Balor from New Japan, which is, again, an overrated character, but way better than his smiling goofball LGBT trans community, uh, Finn Balor, like, lover boy, whatever, right? He, ne like, he should shave his head bald. Like, that haircut is not working. He, um, what's it called? He's balding already, so just get rid of it, you know? Take off the beard and just kind of go with, like, he, maybe he'll look like Fabian Eichner, you know? Like, like serious and younger, so it is what it is. The the, the show was was all right. It wasn't that great, you know. I always like my my shows to be promo heavy and have short but sweet matches that make a point, right? Although the match between Dominic Djokovic, Keith Lee, and Roderick Strong was one of the best matches uh, in NXT history, honestly, it, it what did it further, man? What did it further? Like, these two guys have been feuding with each other. Now they add Roderick Strong and they just lose. Of course they were going to lose. No one's surprised by that. But come on, you know? Why don't we add something, right, to make it worthwhile? You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying, man. Add something to make it worthwhile. Now, this can be rectified pretty easily. If next week there's some sort of, I don't know, 10-man match, right? Or perhaps even a, well, it wouldn't make any sense, but let's say an 8-man match. Undisputed Era versus Champa Gargano. Keith Lee and Dominic Dajakovic. But wait, wait, and then Finn Balor can come in and like do some shit, right? But Keith Lee and Dominic Dajakovic should not go like their separate ways now and start new feuds, right? Something special exists here and they should maybe form a tag team. I don't know. Something needs to happen out of this because the way it was built was as if like Roderick Strong was really worried about these guys and this would lead into some sort of deeper program, right? That would perhaps give some exposure to Dominic Daj uh, Dajakovic and to... Uh, What's his face? Uh, Keith Lee. Because they deserve it. You know, they deserve something. So, there you have it, fuckers. That's my uh, review of NXT. Uh, pretty good show compared to AW. NXT wins this week again, motherfuckers. AW needs to pick it up, man. Like, just the fact that Finn Balor turned heel is more story than the entire episode of AW, right? We actually had something. Something that makes you think, hmm, maybe I'll tune in next week, right? I guess you could tune in next week to AEW to watch the, the first ever tag team champions uh, be crowned. But eventually, motherfucks, they're going to run out of that shit. They're going to run out of, oh, we're going to crown a new champion. 
they need to do some things, like actually have some storylines, man. Like what storylines exist in AW? They started off so strong with the inner circle that I was like, oh, this is going to lead to something, right? They haven't even like, like Sammy Guevara should be feuding with someone as part of this, like maybe this elite versus, uh, what's it called? Um, inner circle feud. Have him feud with Adam Page. I don't know. Like find something for him, you know, so he can get uh, some sort of push, exposure, etc. Or have Jack Swagger come back and feud with uh, Adam Page because they had that little moment. But what what is there to look forward to? Like their pay per view. I know there's there's still a few weeks left. Don't get me wrong. There's what like two weeks left, like two and a half weeks left uh, till Full Gear, uh, or as I uh, as I like to call it, Full Suck, <laughs> um, uh, until the pay per view. But what matches are there to look forward to? Like Moxley versus uh, Kenny Omega. Nothing was furthered. Nothing has been further at all since like John Moxley's debut honestly he just attacks him once in a while no motivations I guess he's just crazy and attacks people but he doesn't always attack him when he has the upper hand and he can end his life with a baseball bat he doesn't do anything so that match like I'm interested in seeing it only because I think it, it would be a good match right that's assuming that Kenny Omega doesn't do too many taunts but it's a pay-per-view match so they're gonna like give it their all I'm sure so I'm, I look forward to seeing I'm not going to get the pay-per-view probably of this. As it stands, definitely not. Right? I was actually thinking about going just because it's like in Baltimore and that's not too far away from me. But let's be honest, right? That match, no real story. What the fuck is Pac doing at pay-per-view? I don't know, right? Cody Rhodes and Jericho, no story whatsoever, really, right? It's, just, it's the same story as John Moxley and Ken Omega. They don't like each other, right? That's it. They don't like each other, man. There's no actual storyline. Like, there's no reason why they don't like each other. They just don't. Yeah, they just don't. First, it was Jericho, like, is upset that he doesn't get the, the props he deserves. But he gets them. You know? Fozzie's doing, like, the, the theme song for the pay-per-view. And he's the champion. And the fans like him. So, that has kind of overstayed its welcome. So, why are they fighting? Same thing with Young Bucks and uh, Ortiz and Santana, right? But is every match there, they don't like each other? Is there no actual story? Right? Even at fucking Crown Jewel, we're going to have Cesaro versus Mansoor, which is going to be atrocious because Mansoor is going to win. But there's a story there. Saudi Arabia's uh, prodigal son wins once again in Saudi Arabia, right? That's, there's, some, there's something there. You know, like, there's something to be excited about, if you're, at least if you're Saudi Arabian. But what, what is there to be excited about thus far for the AW pay-per-view, right? Make a match. Like, just have someone, like, have fucking have someone steal Darby Allen's skateboard and, like, break it or something and be like, fuck you, Darby Allen, the skateboards are gay. S get a scooter, bitch. And then he beats him with a scooter. There you go. I just, I just created a storyline out of thin air that's better than everything they have. At least with Finn Balor uh, teasing some sort of tension with everyone involved, with Johnny Gargano primarily, but even with Undisputed Era and doing the little bullet gun, uh, bullet club thing, right? Maybe one day, hopefully... Finn Balor moves back up to Raw, I can't believe I'm saying it, and joins up with the OC, and they actually start winning some shit, you know? And AJ Styles becomes the champ, or maybe he just stays with champ, and you can, you can even make Finn Balor the champ. But there was at least a semblance of a story here. Even the women's uh, match further an agenda, right? There's all these people who feel like they're being passed over in line, right? That could be a storyline that AW steals. How about this? Pac is pissed off that he, that he has been passed up for... Uh, his title, but it's so, so instead of attacking Kenny Omega, he attacks Cody Rhodes to, to say, what the fuck, man? How'd you, how'd you cut me in line? I'm undefeated, you know? And then maybe John Moxley does the same thing, saying the same thing. How the fuck did, did I get cut in line? I'm undefeated, man. Well, why is Cody Rhodes, who's like one and one or whatever, has beaten really no one? He beat Sean Spears. What the fuck is Sean Spears? It's been like three weeks. I haven't seen him on TV, you know? So, AW, whether you like their men or not, fuckers, uh, if there's any beards listening to this, which I hope there are, because you guys are, but whether you like it or not, you are my target audience. I want the beards, I want the bronies to turn off My Little Pony for a second and tune into the hater so they can see, they can see why I'm trying to help you motherfuckers. I'm not here to become famous on YouTube or any of that shit. I would not do a wrestling channel or a rant channel if that's what I wanted, right? With my unparalleled charisma, I could do anything on YouTube. But the fact remains, I am doing public service. I am trying to help the average neckbeard out there unneckbeard himself or unlegbeard herself if she's abroad, right? I'm trying to tell you what to like, 
as a first step on how to get control of your life once again and not be losers. How to maybe find a girlfriend, maybe hit the gym, maybe stop whacking off the Kenny Omega and Finn Balor and at least start whacking off the women, man. No, no, lesson one, don't whack off to Finn Balor, don't whack off to Kenny Omega, don't whack off to, to hentai, every fucking psychopath whacks off to hentai, to hentai and don't specifically don't whack off don't clop as they say to my little pony do as i say and maybe one day uh we'll get there together motherfuckers hand in hand in a non-gay way and but the reason i say this is because the neckbeards are the ones that will continue to ride for aw no matter what and when an episode is good like episode two was amazing of aw i thought i said that i said this is a good episode this episode was complete shit. This NXT was awesome. Last week's NXT was awesome. Awesome. Last week's was awesome. This week's, I wouldn't say awesome. I'd give it like a B minus. I'd give AW a C minus, you know, and I give NWA an, an A minus. So there you go. That's my rank. I mean, AW episode one. I haven't, I haven't watched the other ones, motherfuckers. So things to look forward to on this channel continued growth, continued education and re education of the Nickbeard. Call it. Red beard conversion therapy, motherfuckers. We're turning you back to normal people. I have your best intentions in mind. Think of me as your best friend and as your therapist. I'm here for y'all. But until then, you can go fuck yourselves and wait for my upcoming, in what, a week or so, review of WWE Crown Jewel. I have a feeling that's going to be a doozy. I thought to myself today, am I going to even watch it? Do I have the nerve to watch an event uh, like during the daytime, whenever the fuck they're going to do it on Halloween? Am I really going to do that? I'm not sure that I'm going to do that. But then I thought to myself, I have to. I mean, there's at least two things on the show that I'm interested in. Three, if you count the tag team turmoil match, because I like me a good tag team turmoil match. And I actually am curious to see who's going to win the best tag team in the world. Right? So there's that. And then, of course, there's uh, Cain Velasquez and Tyson Fury, who are making their debuts. I mean, Cain Velasquez, I think, signed the multi-year deal. So we'll see what, what that, like, I don't even care. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be a good match. But I'm curious to see who's going to win. And I'm curious to see uh, wh what the announcements are going to, what the announcing is going to be like. What Paul Heyman's going to say. All that kind of shit. So what Rey Mysterio is going to say, fuckers. So I'm going to watch that, and I'm going to have a review at some point. I don't know if it's going to be the day of or the day after, but sometime that weekend, I'm sure I'll get around to it. But until then, like I said earlier, until then, fuckers, uh, take your hand out of your dick, turn off My Little Pony, and go and fuck your own selves instead. Because fucking a pony is fucking weird, and people that do that shouldn't, right? And don't be weird. Don't be like Umberto Carrillo, who comes out with a cape. Don't do that. As they said in the movie Role Models, people don't respond well to people that wear capes. But take that cape, wrap it around your hand, and jack off the women. And then, if you still need to, go and fuck your own asses. See you later, fucks.